So when we were colonists and were governed by the British King and Parliament, they devised ingenious means to tax us. One of the most hateful was the Stamp Act. It required that every person in the colonies buy a stamp that bore the image of the king and affix that stamp to every piece of paper in his possession. Question, how did the king know if every colonist was complying with the Stamp Act? Answer, the Townsend Act. This abominable law authorized British soldiers to write their own search warrants. Thus, British soldiers knocked on the doors of the colonists' homes and handed them warrants in which they had authorized themselves to enter, ostensibly to look for the stamps. They entered wherever they wanted, and they took whatever they wished. The colonists were so outraged at these self-written search warrants that Parliament actually rescinded the laws that permitted them. But the offenses to personal dignity and the assaults on private property were too deep. We fought a bloody revolution against the government that did this to us. After we won that revolution, we wrote a constitution to assure that these abuses would not happen again. And to that constitution, we added a Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights guaranteed that the government could not on its own assault your natural rights. Among them, that quintessentially American right, the right to be left alone. Today, we call this right the right to privacy. The Fourth Amendment requires that the government, before the government, can assault your right to privacy and search your possessions, come onto your property, listen to your phone calls, read your mail, monitor your keystrokes on your computer, or even obtain records about you from other sources like doctors, banks, or lawyers. It must present evidence of criminal behavior on your part, under oath to a judge. And only if the judge accepts that evidence, and only if the judge issues a search warrant, may the government legally seek and seize whatever is specifically described in the warrant. No more government knocking on doors in the middle of the night and taking whatever it wished. Regrettably, the federal government has labored mightily to get around all this. Even though every person who works for the government has taken an oath to uphold the Constitution, many of them seem to spend more time avoiding and evading it. In the days after 9-11, Congress enacted the Patriot Act, an abominable piece of legislation which permits federal agents to write their own search warrants. With the Patriot Act, we have come full circle from the days in which a king unleashed soldiers upon us on their own to the present day in which our elected representatives have unleashed federal agents upon us on their own, all in utter disregard for our natural right to be left alone and the constitutional requirements of a judicially issued search warrant. The Patriot Act, perpetrated by a Republican president and Congress, was and is one of the gravest legislative, assault, legislative assaults on human freedom. It was harshly criticized at the time by a young Democratic senator from Illinois named Barack Obama. But freedom must look very different from inside the White House than from outside. This morning, we learned from the front page of the Wall Street Journal that the Obama Justice Department, without obtaining search warrants, has been using a, a computer program called Stingray, which manipulates your cell phone to enable the government to follow you whenever the phone is with you. And last month, the Obama Justice Department told the Supreme Court that it has been installing GPS systems on the cars of those without cell phones so it can follow them. And last spring, the Obama Justice Department persuaded the court to let cops break down doors without a search warrant on the basis of what they think they smell from coming behind the doors. And somehow it claims that the Fourth Amendment is no obstacle to all this. What's going on here? Is this really America in 2011 or is it East Germany in 1961? Would the government prefer to watch all of us, to seize our computer records, to listen to our conversations, to break down our doors whenever it wished without following the Constitution? Yes, it would. Power by nature expands. That's why we have a Constitution, to restrain governmental power. Who would want to live in a society where the government was unrestrained? Have we fought wars against totalitarian governments only to find that we have elected one here at home? Did you even know that the federal government may be using your cell phone to follow you wherever you go? Have we become a nation of sheep? Sadly, the answers to these questions are obvious.